Amen. 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 Give God a shout of praise this morning. I think we can do a little bit better than that this morning. Amen. Let's sing the steadfast love. Can we sing the steadfast love together? Because the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. So sometimes it feels like everything's caving in. But we need to remind us, ourselves that God's love is steadfast. His mercies are new every morning. And morning isn't a time of day. Morning is a state of mind. An awakening. Do you An awakening. See, yes. Do you see the light or are you seeing darkness? But today we decide we're going to see the light of Hallelujah. the world. Hallelujah. We are going to be the salt Amen. of this Amen. earth. We're going to give people a taste of what our Jesus is. Hallelujah. Regardless of the rice you make, the salt will give it flavor. Amen. And that is what we're saying this morning. Regardless of what the situation, the circumstance, we will proclaim our Lord, Hallelujah. our Savior. Hallelujah. We will lift Him up yeah. higher, higher, higher this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. You, God is Thank good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Great is Thy faithfulness. Let's sing it together. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never will come to an end. They are new every morning. They are new every morning. God is faithful this morning. Amen. God is great. God is wonderful this morning. Amen. As you be, you may be seated as you are, we're going to call up Sister Urshi, who's going to come and do the welcome for us this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's give her a hand of applause as she comes up this morning. morning church it is good to be in the house of the lord amen oh how awesome it is just to be in the presence of the lord just to be in the presence of brethren 
just 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 rubbing off that anointing it is so good to be in the house of the lord so without further ado welcome to the to the house of the lord it is good to see you guys all looking so glamorous pastor lubby pastor audrey everybody looking so glamorous a few of you i haven't seen in months huh it's a good thing i think so pastor lubby huh i think i think i think your prophet is going to rise a little bit huh because everybody just went they just went right uh, to the right ne yeah, pastor lubby so we thank god we welcome you to the church of the house this morning i uh, thank you pastor audrey all the leaders that are affording me this opportunity once again uh, pastor green and auntie lus in the absence we miss them so much we trying to get a hold of them but i think they are sleeping they not answering the phones <laughs> so give your neighbor a bluetooth high five and say you made it man you made it this morning uh, god has been good to us a lot of us has, have lost along the way but here we stand by the grace of god it is so good to stand here once again it feels like home it feels like home i've really missed it thank you lord for just being with us this morning so uh, we live on facebook for those that's not joining us this morning uh please check us out on facebook uh, pastor uh, teacher sharman is going to share the word um please receive from the table eat and 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 be fed um we say thank you for those that is adhering to the rules we know guys it's a bit tough we know it's a restriction but when you in the house of the lord there's no restrictions so let's adhere to to the rules let's not be unruly and rebellious put on your mask when you come in make sure you sanitize fill in your form it's a it's a but it's a bit of a of a process but we will get through this ne we are most orderly people when we when we would god god or the jesus says we must be holy like he is holy so we submit we submit to to god we submit to to pastor audrey the leaders of this of this house and and we submit to the government so this morning um be welcome enjoy the service thank you praise and worship for you guys uh, thank you we know that you guys uh, rehearse Uh, on a Saturday, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for just uh, uh, gracing us with the presence of the Lord. Next week, guys, we're gonna have communion again. Church starts 9:30. If you can, please come a little bit earlier. As you can see, there's a whole process that's that's going on. If you feel a little bit ill and you know you've got the fever and you know that you've been in contact with somebody. that is ill please um refrain from coming to church we don't like to chase people away but but let's just do the decent thing we regret for now um there's no kiddies uh we still working on that pastor audrey with the with the sunday school leaders as soon as um we have a plan with the kiddies the kizzy they will come to church we know that they are reckless at home they also must the word of god and the discipline that they received at church so we working on a plan and we know that the holy spirit will come through for us um i think we need to go to our vision that is the reason why we here can we all stand to our feet we are a kingdom minded christ centered church preaching the gospel of jesus christ through the power of the holy spirit a place called home where love and unity resides families are restored and communities are served with the purposes of god this is an equipping and mobilizing center empowering the individual holistically to live a fruitful and productive life in christ jesus and how do we do that love we teach we reach and we restore and we thank god that the division is still is still is still is still applicable we thank god that we still working on that vision we didn't deviate and it's all thanks to god's grace and his favor so without further ado um teacher shaman are we still going to go into worship or anything else from you pastor did i cover everything have an awesome time in the presence of the lord
Amen. Let's just prepare our hearts this morning as we're going to worship God. Amen. Lord, we just worship you this morning. We just thank you for thank this you, opportunity. We, we can find thank ourselves you, just lifting up your name, Lord Jesus. Just saying the name of the Lord is greater, is more wonderful than anything else, Lord Jesus. How good it is to know that we are in love with a master that loves us more than we could ever understand, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are good, that you are kind, that you are faithful. We love you, we love you, we love you, Lord Jesus. Sanda basiki kere sende bosu kuru Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm 
way. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing. came to seek and save that which is lost and we thank you that you saved us called us by your name and today we are sons and daughters of the living God we want to bless you for this opportunity to come before your presence come before your word pray that you'd speak to us that the word will become life in us and cause a transformation to take place as we conform to the image of your dear Son, we want to thank you, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Think through my vocal, think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, anoint our ears to hear what you are saying. Thank you for a specific word, tailor-made for our situation. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a clap offering of praise. Come on and give him a praise and a shout and a glory. Amen, amen, amen. Take your seats, hallelujah. I mean sit on it, I don't mean take it. Sit on the seat. I saw you wanting to walk out with the seat. Biggie, no brother. Sit. <laughs> amen, what a joy to come before the word. I would like to thank our leadership for the opportunity. Amen. We've been dealing for the last few weeks from the subject by grace through faith. Amen? Amen? We've determined that God has a part that He plays. We have a part that we play. We understand that grace has made all things available to us. Everything that God has promised you in His Word is no longer just a promise. It is a blood sworn reality. Because a promise means I'm still going to do it. But when it comes to the new covenant, God has already done it for you. It is no, no longer a promise. It is a biblical reality that you can take a hold of. Because if it's only a promise from a new old covenant perspective, it's a promise. Because Jesus hadn't died yet. But once Jesus died, he said it is finished. Everything is done. So the deposit has been made into your account. But how many know that you do not make a withdrawal automatically? Isn't it? You can have all the money in the world in your bank account and be hungry. 
who's stingy. You don't want to draw. Huh? You, why? This is the picture of the body of Christ. We're sitting with a table prepared in the presence of our enemies. And people are starving. And God is looking at people and they're asking for food. But the table is decked. You are so hungry. The white <laughs> And you're sitting there and God is looking at you and you're looking at God to feed you. Must God come to your plate? In your mouth. Hi man, he's ungroot. Isn't it? So this is the situation. You just need to stretch forth your hand and eat. Hallelujah. Our text. Ephesians. Chapter 2. Glory be to Jesus. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Chapter 2, verse 8. By grace are you saved through the vehicle called faith. That it's not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Notice, look what the Lord says here. It's not of yourself, it is a gift. Right? Right? The greatest compliment you can give someone is to take the gift. Isn't it? It's an insult if someone loves you and wants to give you a gift and you say, no, thank you. That's pride. How many know it's easy to give, it's hard to receive? Huh? And you know, sometimes God will humble you by, letting, by meeting your need through the most unlikely vessel. Because sometimes we think, oh Lord, you're going to meet my need. And you come iman, but ye nix. Urdankni. I know that's, that's proper Afrikaans. You think nothing of some people. Yeah. You know how human beings are. If someone can't benefit you, you don't worry about them. I've seen it in the workplace. You find people that build relationships with you just because they know they will need you. And then you see how they treat others that don't affect their work. Is it not true? So a lot of times you need to value the vessel that God will send your way. And swallow your pride. Notice what God does to Elijah. He makes ravens feed him. A half blind bird. <laughs> and as a fail fool. It's a dirty bird, a raven. Why didn't you use a pure white dove, O oh God? No. And besides that, he knew the king. He could have easily gone to the king and eat there. God said, uh-uh, raven. Sometimes God will humble you because you still work sometimes. So when you stand in faith and believe God, be, be open to any vessel that he wants to bring your way and receive it with humility. Amen. Because in our mind, sometimes we work out how God must meet your need. He's got a million and one ways that He can meet your need. And, and you have probably haven't thought of 99.9% .9 of them. Don't be like this brother who went next to the millionaire in faith. In the, in the, in the prayer line. He knows this guy is a millionaire. He goes, stands there, Lord, my wife needs a fridge. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for a new fridge. And he turns his head towards the ear of the millionaire. Oh, please, Jesus, a new fridge. The millionaire gets under guilt and buys him a fridge. He says, my faith worked. Ah, you manipulated that, man, that man, millionaire. When you stand in faith, you don't need to tell nobody nothing. Either you believe God or you don't. So you believe in God. God will talk to people. Don't come to people and say, has the Lord spoken to you about me? Do you have a word from ah? God is God. He can get a message across. If he can get it across through a donkey, he can get it through someone. Amen? So the walk of faith is the believer's greatest privilege and a command from the Lord. You cannot please God without faith. God is more interested in the process than the result. We like the result, but God is pleased when you stand and it looks like nothing is happening. That's when faith is tested. 
when you when you're standing for healing and it seems like things are getting worse and you refuse to change God smiles and says that's maturity this one is growing up I heal me for Allah's huh? a lot of times people oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a man of faith I'm a man of faith until trouble hits Ooh, then you see how they panic then you're like but I thought you were a person of faith <laughs> how about you see Jesus <laughs> Lord please help oh man you need to get tough man the reason why God sent you to the planet during this time when it's the most dangerous time in the history of the human race is because you have what it takes Amen. you could have been born 500 years ago a thousand years ago four thousand years ago he put you here in the last of the last days because you have what it takes to become a man and woman of faith and please him Amen. hallelujah now my, 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 my motivation today is to share with you and hopefully this will be the last installment of this series but we'll see how the Lord leads us uh, the problem go to Mark chapter 4 the problem we have in the church is during the growing time of the seed we've planted that's the time when the battle rages from the time you take the faith stand and you cross the line and you say I'm standing that's when all hell breaks loose and that's where most people lose the battle because you assume that it would be easy to walk into the into the reality of what God has given you no the battle rages particularly when you start taking a faith stand huh? you you can you can have a choice you have the choice you could sit still and take out your white flag and make a truce with the devil and says leave me alone and I'll leave you alone and not do anything and not stand for anything and not fight for anything if you do that the devil says thank you self-deceived person I'll go fight someone else because what does the scripture say in the book of James if you don't become a doer of the word you deceive yourself you don't, the devil doesn't even have to deceive you. You're not even an issue to him. You'll go to someone that's being a problem to him. But then again, you will still be miserable and unhappy and unfulfilled because you know in your know that you know there's more. You know that there's more. There's got to be more than this that you are currently experiencing. True? So, when you, this, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, then you must make the change. You know what God does a lot of times? He allows the misery factor to exceed your fear factor. Sometimes you're scared to move because it's unfamiliar territory where you need to go to. But now God allows you to get so miserable where you are that you're no longer afraid because the misery now overtakes you like, I no man, then you start moving. Some of you are getting to that place right now where you are miserable and it's a good thing because God is saying eat the nest you eaglet it's time to fly I can't feed you that's what the eagle does to a little young it seems cruel she stops feeding him and she starts she starts taking the comfort out of the nest all those little soft things and she leaves the twigs and the, uh, the hard stuff that's the foundation of the nest she takes all the softness the, 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 the little eaglet gets uncomfortable and eventually she says out how can you do this I'm your child but when he does that something happens hey I got stuff here what is this and if you're going to hit the ground she comes she picks him up alright we try it again let's go out again until eventually it clicks to say I'm born for the open skies I'm not born to stay stuck in this nest that's what's happening spiritually to a lot of us God is saying get out time to fly you're no longer a baby Christian this is why if you notice that when you were newly saved your prayers would get answered quickly but now it takes time no say you would have brought us if you anointed he laid hands on me and nothing happened uh uh 
time for you to grow up. You can't be coming to every prayer line. You should be praying for somebody else. That's maturity. That's growth. And that's where we're at right now. God is challenging you and I. Come out. Spread your wings. Come and taste the open skies. Once you're flying there, you're like, man. And here's the thing about the eagle. A storm has no effect on it. It just goes above the storm. It just goes above the storm. So he's having sunshine while everybody else is under the storm. This is the life of faith. You and I are supposed to soar above the circumstances of life. While people are going through what they're going through, you have sunshine. But notice the effort to fly and stay above. That's a life of faith. You fill your spirit, man, with the word of God. All you need to do to lose spiritual ground is nothing. Just sit still and do nothing and watch yourself go back. You will, the whole world system is designed and, 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 it's, and it's moving towards negativity and death because Satan is the god of this world. So, so things are moving towards killing, stealing and destroying. So if you have no res- put up no resistance and you just sit still and just go with the flow, you're going to go with that flow. It takes courage to go upstream. Hello? And that's the life of faith. And so sometimes uh, 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 we get in there and that's the minute you're inside and you took your faith stand, that's when the battle is the most severe. You know why? Because it's easy to uproot a seed than it is to uproot a tree. Huh? A little twig or a little shrub, you can easily uproot it. But let that thing get roots. Let it get roots. Have you ever tried to take out a boom stump? You, you, it, is, it is not easy. So that's what the devil is afraid of. Satan is not worried about you. He's worried about the word in your heart. Because once it gets in there, that's when he comes for it immediately. Because once he gets it out in its infant stage, it's easy. So what happens? People receive the word with gladness. Oh, praise God. I had no hope. They told me I was going to die. But I saw in the word that by his stripes I'm healed. So it brings gladness. And then the devil said, really? Let's see. Turns up the fire. And now all of a sudden, he comes and he says, I thought you said that by his stripes you were healed. Now what is happening now with you? Don't look like God heard you. If God didn't hear you, why is he making such a a buhai? When you see it's going crazy, you know God heard you. It should be a greatest tip off to say, Man, all of a sudden hell is in my house. Amen. The devil is panicking. I'm staying here on this word. And then you develop roots. Be consistent day in, day out. Let me read to you this. Mark chapter 4. Hallelujah. We will help you. Amen. Let's read from. Just want to make sure I got. 26. Verse 26. And he said. This is Jesus talking about the kingdom of God. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. So in other words, it is not that much visible. Can you see? A seed is never visible. Is it? Not yet. So when you start the process of faith, it is not visible that things are happening. Because you don't see evidence yet of your healing but you've taken your faith stand you've crossed the line you said I I'm not sitting down and playing dead I'm fighting till I win it's the good fight of faith then he says he should sleep verse 27 sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knows not how do you see you don't know how God's gonna get you what is getting to you it's none of your business 
The seed does not tell you how it's growing. It knows what to do. The soil knows what to do. The seed knows what to do. Everything knows what to do in order to cause a, a harvest. Don't interrupt the process. You, you plant your seed. Two days later you say, Come back seed. <laughs> ah, ish this thing. I this one, man. Ish. I the seed. Ah. You will destroy the seed. Leave it. So this is what you do. Once you've planted the word in your spirit, you begin to make your faith confessions, you stay with it. Don't dig it up like this. Ish. I'm not sure God heard me. Hey? Ish, the pain is getting worse. Hey? This is what we do. Father, pray for me. Pray for me by his stripes and milk. So we lay hands on you. You believe God when you walk out. <coughs> Ish, that brother lost the anointing. Eh? You just dug up the seed. Don't do that. I don't care what the situation is. Don't accept what the devil and his report says. Amen. The doctors may give you a report and say, this is, ah, say thank you for your opinion. This is truth. I don't need facts. I need truth. Truth is greater than facts. You know that. It could be a fact that it's raining. But the truth is the sun is always shining. Is it me? The sun is always shining. Even when it's night time, the sun is shining. Somewhere on the other side of the world, the sun is shining. That is a truth. Facts change. Truth doesn't. So if you stay with truth, it will change facts. Day in, day out. You have to be consistent. In consistency lies the power. Because you are busy planting, watering and when you stay in faith stay in love because love makes faith work, don't fight with people don't let the devil pull you out of love into strife because then it will produce confusion and every evil work the Bible says huh? so love is the foundation upon which your faith should stand so when people want to fight you zip Huh? You don't have to defend yourself. God is your defender. Just smile and say, I love you. Whether you like it or not. And you go about your business. Your faith will work. It's growing every single day when you stay with it. You keep your mind on it. The Bible says you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed. How do you stay your mind on him? Stayed on his word because you've never seen him. So you can't picture him. So you, you have to stay on what he said. Are you hearing me? You stay with what he says. Walk around. Read that word. Read those promises out loud. Every day of your life. Read, quote the word. You're feeding your spirit man. You're building strength into your spirit man. The way you eat spiritually is by talking the word. Speaking is eating. Ah, you don't hear me. You don't eat with a closed mouth. Oh, the mask on. What a funny. You don't eat with a closed mouth. How do you eat? There's activity there. So how do you eat spiritually? Same way. They must, you must talk. Don't tell me you have faith and nothing comes out of your mind. Are you healed? Mm, 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 mm. My man. Talk. Talk. Whether they laugh at you, talk. How are you feeling? Who cares how I feel by his stripes and meal? See? Faith doesn't deny the problem. It just ignores it. It, does, it, does, it doesn't consider it. Abraham never said, Ooh, me hundred, I'm not. I'm not hundred years, no I'm not. This is, people think faith is denying what's there. You call me. What I put your leg? There's nothing wrong with my leg. No, you're not in faith. You are in denial. So the Bible says he was under, read the book of Romans chapter 4. Though he was a hundred years old, 
And though Sarah's womb was dead, he considered not that, but he considered the promise that God said. And the Bible says he became strong in faith. Strong in faith. So what did he do? Hello, I'm the father of many nations. Remember, God changed his name. Hello, I'm the father of many nations. And can you imagine people... <laughs> Ooh, this opa here. I think Abraham is senile. He's, he's at that age. You know, that age where... But they couldn't touch him because he was rich. He was running the show. So you can't... When, a, when, when someone has got the money, they're in charge. So Abraham walks around... Hello, I'm the father of many nations. Hello, I'm the father of many nations. Oh, your old dad changed your name. Hello, I'm the father of many nations. Hello, I'm the father of many nations. Hello, I'm the father of many nations. Faith come up by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Hello, I'm the father of many. You went from, Lord, I don't have a child. Lord, can the servant live before you? Please, Lord, the servant. God said, Ah, you're gonna have a son with this old woman. Okay, I'm the father of many nations. She's the mother of the many nations. Something shifts in the spirit. And the Bible says, he became strong in faith, giving glory to God. So when you are filled with faith, worship and praise will come out of your mouth. In the midst of how your body is reacting, you'll be like, praise God, I'm healed. Hallelujah. And people are like, the last lach, lach die lekkerste. Because there's going to come a day when it's harvest time. Look at the word here. Man, this is good stuff. I need to listen to this. <laughs> For the earth brings forth fruit of herself. Right? First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Notice there's a progression of faith. There's a progression of faith. It goes through a process. You'll see glimpses of it. Oh, something is happening here. Oh, it's not there yet fully, but something's happening. So there's a progression. All of a sudden, you start feeling stronger. There may still be stuff. You start feeling stronger. You're like, oh man, amen. You keep going. First the blade, then the ear. Then harvest time comes. But, verse 29, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle because harvest has come now it's time to harvest you will know that you know that you know you've crossed the line into the promised land of harvest and once you're there now it's time to act on what god is take it man. now you take it grace gave it to you take it by faith and don't don't debate once you've taken it don't change because here's another thing that people forget the minute they get what God has promised them and what is God has given them, they go and relax. And Satan comes with a counter attack. The devil is a... The, the, the greatest characteristic of the devil is he's consistent. That's the nicest thing you can say about the devil. <laughs> Nothing else. He is consistent. He doesn't quit. But you must make sure that you whip him every time he comes at you. He must think twice before attacking you. It's like, ich last the kier. I he slapped me last time. So if I go here again, I run the risk of slap being slapped again. Then you slap him again. That's the Bible says uh, 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 he's been defeated. You must enforce his defeat. How do you enforce his defeat? Keep your foot on his neck. Yeah. I said, neck, move. I said, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, my bro. Hey. If he just moves and say, hey. You need to be like that. Spiritually, you must be on high alert. If he just moves wrong. <coughs> I said, Diana, I lost him. Lost Diana. Diana, Salam, next month, drive here. Because you're never going to, you just keep him there. You understand? Don't accept what's not yours. If I come to your doorstep with a box of snakes and you sign for it, you got snakes. Can you imagine here I come. Would you like the snakes? 
And there you go, oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I don't want it. Sorry, sir, you signed. Bye-bye. Isn't it madness for you to want to give it back after you signed? When they come with the snake, say, mm -mm, I didn't order no snakes. About face, brother. Go that way. So here comes the devil with the flu. Oh, I'm catching the flu. Oh, I'm catching it. Ooh. Symptoms. Whoop. Take for you. And the devil says, thank you for receiving what I tricked you into taking. Huh? You don't do that. You don't do that. You say, all right, what is this coming here? Okay, this steals, it kills and destroys. I don't want it. Devil, not here. Go next door. Ah, uh, you look at me funny. Verse 30, And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or what comparison shall we compare it to? It is like a grain of mustard seed. Right? You see that? A grain. Have you seen a mustard seed? I remember one time pastor showed us a mustard seed. You all remember that? Grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. Because here's the thing about doing things God's way. It will look like everybody else is moving forward and you're staying behind. Because they're operating the world's way of things. And it looks like they're achieving and they're attaining. And the devil will say, look, look, you and your God. And it looks like they're just going, but you don't see the sorrow that comes with, with what they, they... People can show you the... You know the Instagram, Facebook world we live in today. People show, show you glamorous lives. Then you ask yourself, <laughs> He's not, I know this one. What he's showing us here on Facebook is not the truth. Everyone has issues and goes through stuff whether they're celebrities or not, don't be fooled. It looks like the celebrities are people on another level. No, they're not. They just have the best cameras and the best makeup. They just have those things that make them look. But if you get into their house and say, Oh, I did a schroff, dear no man. Then you'll be like, no, 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 no. These people are just as normal as everybody else. No one got the lucky ticket. Nobody. And so people show you this glamorous life that they live. And then you, here you're standing with God and it feels like you're all by yourself and it looks like nothing is working. Stay with it. Tomorrow those people will come to you for help. Oh, this is good stuff. I don't know about you. Look at this. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater. Do you see? Then all the herbs and shoots out great branches so that the fowl of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. So all of a sudden now, you become a resource of blessing for other people. Because if you are walking in healing harvest, you're going to tell people, hey, listen, listen, don't accept this. Here's my testimony. I went through a test. But now I have a testimony. Hmm? And now here is, I'm standing in healing harvest. What God has done for me, He'll do for you. If you will stand and not quit. Now watch. This is the story here. Jesus, I need to close. men. Jesus was teaching this the whole day. The whole day. And remember He said, Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the whole day he's pouring out life. And he's pouring out faith. Because faith comes by hearing the word. And Jesus is the word made flesh. And so what's coming out of his mouth is faith. He's feeding them. True? The whole day. So in other words, they had a lack of deposit of faith. Then he gives them a word. Let us go to the other side. And he goes and he sleeps. Right? And then... Verse 35. And the same day, so tell your neighbor the same day. When the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Remember, Jesus, I say nothing if the Father doesn't say it. So which means the Father through Jesus said, 
Let us go to the other side. Amen? So that's a word from God. You with me? And when they had sent the multitude away, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, and that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they wake, they awake him, and say unto him, Master, don't you care that we perish? <laughs> and if you go back to verse 19, 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns. When they hear the word, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word. He told them, care will. He just told them the whole day. These are the things that the devil will use to steal the word out of your heart. And one of the biggest ones is care, anxiety, and worry. Right? And now here they come to him. Don't you care? <laughs> How can you? I just warned you the whole day. Care will choke the word. Now you come to me and asking me, why don't you care with us? People will get mad at you when you refuse to join them in their care. Huh? Sometimes human nature is, we like pity parties. And we invite, invite our three best friends, me, myself, and I. And there you go, feeling sorry for yourself. You, you rehearse your problems, you nurse it, and you curse it. Huh? And if I refuse to join you, and you quote for me. I can't agree with you because we're too agree, it's done. I don't want to destroy you. I'm a, don't agree with someone in the negative. Say, listen, listen, listen. I will agree with you when you get on faith. Then it's established. Then we invite Jesus into the agreement, it's done. Mm. And he arose, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea and said, Peace! Be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Notice, notice, watch, I'm going to show you something. Peace, be still. Hey, peace, shh. Ah, you'll get him. Peace, be still. You guys are at peace with the storm. Why don't you talk to it? Ah, you'll get him three o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Peace. Be still. Why? There's not a time to be at peace with the situation. Ah, I'm showing another angle here. It's time to say something. Because look, look. It's not about him being the son of God. He gave them faith the whole day. They were supposed to use that faith to stop the storm. It is the wrong time to be at peace when there's chaos. We're talking about silence of the mouth. You need to talk. Say something. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith when I gave it to you the whole day? Fear tolerated is faith contaminated so what did what what jesus warned them about happened to them when they have heard the word satan comes immediately and takes the word that was sown in the heart with a little storm that the devil blew up trying to stop them from going to the other side he stole the word out of their heart they're no longer in faith they are in fear do you see that? So Jesus is shocked. He's like, guys, I was sleeping so nice. I was just chilling. I worked the whole day. I'm tired. I preached all day long. Couldn't you handle this little storm? Did you read the book, guys? Death by crucifixion, not drowning. It's not drowning. Why are you panicking? I'm not going out in a... If you're not done with your purpose, why must the devil take you out? Don't let him take you out. 
by hauling it your white flag. Peace. Peace, devil. Ah, there's no time for peace. You must fight the good fight of faith. You can be at peace in your heart, but there must be activity coming from you. That's what the Bible speaks about when it says, run your race with patience. Because you look at running and patience, they, can't, they don't connect. Woo, you are not, you're going to get this. Because when you're patient, you come. So inside, this is, the, this is how you should look like. Inside you must be at total peace. No turmoil. Because when you're in turmoil, you can't think straight. You must be at peace, but there must be activity. When I look at you, you are running. You, 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 are, you are active, you are doing, but inside of you, chilled. Right? So when there's a storm, it's not a time to be shut mouth. You need to talk. So, right, I'm changing this. In the name of Jesus. Speak to the mountain. God never told you to talk to him about the mountain. That's your problem. Please, Lord, please, Lord, I ask you to heal. You already healed. You must say, be healed in Jesus' name. Not, please, Lord, heal. God is like, what are you doing? I've already healed them. You need to release. The healing that's already theirs. Why are you talking to me about the healing? Moses, Moses, Lord, the Red Sea. God said, why are you crying to me? Open it. Because he stands before the people. He says, the people are panicking. Here's the Egyptians coming. Here's the Red Sea. He says, silence. The enemies you see today, you won't see them anymore. And then he ran behind the bush. God did you what I told the people. God said, no, you said it, do it. Don't come crying to me. You said it, do it, come, let's go. Stretch out your staff, open the sea, let this go. Do you see? Tell your neighbor, talk. Oh, you mooi, ya, so ladi, they will fully in the ace and he said, nooks. That child, that son of yours, that's making you a grace. Talk and say, in the name of Jesus, you are saved. You devil, you take your hands off my child in Jesus. They talk, say something, don't just accept. And stand. If it gets worse, I still a day I don't change. Stay with God. If God has to send an angel to slap him, God will do it. Amen. I need to close. Stand to your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word today. My prayer is that you would, you would cause, I'm asking you, cause us to be miserable in a, with a mediocre lifestyle. And cause us to be stirred up to move towards all that you have for us. In the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord. That we will develop the consistency and the spiritual stamina to stand on your word and not move. To take the wonderful promises that are now blood-bought realities. And that we will meditate on them day and night. Till we come to the place of fully persuaded that you are faithful to what you've promised and that we will have testimony after testimony of what God has done for us. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah.